This year has reminded us of the importance of saving for the unexpected. And as a bank, our job is to make that a little easier for everyone. That's why at Huntington, we're so proud to introduce Money Scout. It analyzes your checking account to find money that's not being used and moves it to your savings automatically. It's that simple. So you can always be saving, even now. Learn more and enroll at Huntington.com slash Money Scout. Huntington, welcome. Money Scout is subject to eligibility, terms and conditions, and other account agreements. Member FDIC. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope. It's Geico. Uh, yeah, 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 that's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, give it thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Good morning, Hoop Ballers, and welcome to another edition of Hoop Balls DFS. Today, this is your Wednesday, February 3rd edition. I am your host for this one, Santino Cocone. I am filling in for the great Micah Patria, uh, and I am joined by a first-time uh, guest of mine. Uh, he's been on a couple already, but I haven't gotten the pleasure to do one with him yet. This is Keith Cork. How are you doing tonight, buddy? Hey, I'm doing pretty well, man. How are you doing? Doing good myself. And yeah, like I mentioned, we haven't been able to uh, do a podcast yet together. So this is going to be uh, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely pumped, man. It's uh, it's good to get some some new voices and some new looks at things and you know, see if we uh, see how it jives and uh, looking forward to it. And I have been seeing a, a few things that you've been doing on, on Twitter about a, a lot of your breakdowns for the, the slate, um, particular slates. And tell the tell the guys where they can find you on on Twitter because it is a different type of name with letters and numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a difficult difficult one. It's uh, at Ginsburg Beats, like uh, Alan Ginsberg, and he's a beat poet, so, so that's where it came from. But G one N S B E R G B three A T S Ginsburg Beats. All right, I like it. Um, then you can find myself. On Twitter at Santino Cocone, Mike and my, myself, we just we, we don't we're not that original. If you can tell, we just have the standard name as our our tag and our name. Um, but here we are, and this is a big one today, man. We have another ten game slate. Uh, we were you were just saying it before we went on. It seems like you keep getting caught with these massive slates. Uh, I don't know what it is with Wednesday. Maybe they change it in the second half. But for as so far in the first month or plus of the season, Wednesday has been a big one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I got that big 10 gamer, a 12 gamer and a 10 gamer again. So uh, it's, 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 it's cool, man. It's I, I like to dig into this stuff and uh, a lot of teams mean a lot of opportunities. So I'm, I'm ready to go, man. It's all good. Of course. <laughs> Sounds good. And then before we start here, I just do want to shout out our presenting sponsors. Uh, starting with my bookie. And I keep repeating it. My bookie is the place that I bet personally. And it's the one place that I, tr- I trust. Uh, and whether it's NBA related bets, NHL related bets, MLB related bets that are coming soon, NFL that are just almost done. Uh, we have the big game on Sunday, which I can't wait for as well. Uh, but this is the place that I, I bet, and I can't give out my stamp of approval as many times as or enough, I should say. Um, to earn earn that stamp, you have to be the best at what you do, and my bookie is the best sports book out there. Period, and it's a simple. As signing up, enter the promo code HoopBall, that's H-O-L-P-B-A-L-L, and get your deposit matched halfway up to 1000 bucks. So guys, head on over to MyBookie if you want to add a little excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet. Bet with the best, bet with MyBookie. I also love the casino aspect of it. I play it every once in a while. Uh, it, it's just, it's really fun. And especially with not wanting to really go to a casino in this day and age, it's it's a good one to uh, to play. And they do have live dealers too for the people that are, weirded out about um, virtual poker, virtual black blackjack, whatever it is. They have actual dealers where they have a camera right on them. So uh, check that one out also. 
Um, and I also do want to say, uh, shout out our guys over at Manscaped. Uh, so Valentine's Day is upon us, fellas. Make sure you're ready for wherever the night may take you. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in men's below-the-waist grooming, are here to tell you that you need to use the best tools for the job so you can be ready for anything on that special day. Uh, and the best one is the Perfect Package. And the Perfect Package 3.0 is led by the revolutionary third-generation lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, which has advanced skin-safe technology and features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. It's waterproof which presents a mess in the bathroom floor and in the sink, especially when it's time for Cupid to shoot his arrow. Uh, and you also get the Crop Preserver, the Crop Reviver, uh, the my favorite, the Manscaped Boxers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, I'm a simple guy. I love those things. Uh, the Anti-Shaping Boxers. And then you get the Refined Cologne. It's, it's a new signature scent by Manscaped. But you can get all this in the perfect package. Um, and get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code HOOPBALL20, that's H-O-L-P-B-A-L-L-2-0, at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com, and use the promo code HOOPBALL20. Happy Valentine's Day from Manscaped. Uh, now, Keith, it's my, my favorite part. I think it's your favorite part, too. We can dive right into this slate. We have a 10-gamer. We have two games at 7, and that's where we'll start on this. Uh, the first one on the docket on DraftKings is... The Sixers at the Hornets, or uh, the Bobcats for Will out there. He hates when I call them the Bobcats. Uh, <laughs> but we have, on the injury report, we have the Sixers have Terrence Ferguson, Paul Reed, Mike Scott, and uh, the, and Rajon Tucker. They're all out. And on the Hornets, we have, uh, I'll just go with the people not on the two-way contracts or, or G League, uh, Terry Rozier is questionable, and P.J. Washington, that's a big one. He's out. Uh, so let's start. Oh, and we have... We do not have a, a spread for this one, just so you guys know. Uh, but let's start on the Philly side, man. Where are you looking in this one, knowing that Charlotte might be down two starters? Uh, they do have Cody Zeller back, but uh, can you play a Joel Embiid in this matchup with the possibility of uh, a lopsided score? Can you go with Ben Simmons, or what you feeling here? Yeah, I mean, it could be a lopsided score, but I do, I do feel a little bit of Joel Embiid. I think he's a strong play. Um, you know, against that weak interior defense over in Charlotte, they don't even have PJ Washington. I mean, they're playing PJ Washington at center for a reason, right? It's uh, a PJ Washington's a good player, uh, but B, it's because they just don't really have any other big bodies to throw in there. And I don't even know if they would pl- they play him at center against Joel Embiid, but he's not even there. Doesn't even don't doesn't even matter. Um, I, I like Joel Embiid going against them. I'll definitely play that 10K price tag for him that's a little pricey but um i think he'll probably hit value uh ben simmons is another guy i'm looking at 8200 uh you know the trio of guards that are in charlotte they're not exactly intimidating on the defensive end and uh you know he's playing well when he's getting the minutes ben simmons is so um yeah i like him he's, he's had nearly uh 50 dk points in two of his last three games so i do like him at that 8200 price tag and then the last guy i'd use uh is, is tobias harris he's 7300 i i would just use him as filler in a, in a cash play i mean i think he's just a very very solid floor guy and uh, i really don't think it's going to be a blowout here there's always that potential there especially with the people out but um yeah i think charlotte's gonna gonna keep it competitive here and i don't know if the 76ers are necessarily gonna blow them out i don't know if they really have that capability to be honest with you but um what do you think yeah, and I'm I'm with you on the, the Sixer side. If I'm playing anybody, I'm looking at the big three. I would look at Embiid um, first and foremost. He is 10K, though, so there are some other options there in that range that I like. But Joel Embiid in this matchup, if he's playing and the game's competitive, uh, Cody Zeller is not going to be able to guard him. He's he's not uh, big enough for him. And Bismack Biombo is just not good. <laughs> so uh, there's that. I, I don't, I like Ben Simmons. I do also think that there's a lot of other options. So I'm not going to have too much exposure to Simmons in this one, uh, but he's a nice pivot option for me in, in tournaments. I do like Tobias Harris though. And I do think, like you said, he is very safe. The floor is very safe with him. Uh, so he's more of a cash game guy to me, but uh, this is a very good matchup. And then there's not going to be PJ Washington opposing him at power four for most of the game. They'll probably go with Miles Bridges, which is an upgrade uh, in, in its own right. Uh, but I'm not going to really touch anybody else on, on the Sixers squad here as well. Uh, but let's jump on over to the the Hornets, man. Uh, we mentioned P.J. Washington will be out for this one. Terry Rozier is questionable, and that's that's a big news right there. Uh, two guys that are starters. One is out. One is questionable. And we're probably going to get LaMelo Ball back in the starting lineup, assuming Terry Rozier is out. And I think Miles Bridges is going to slide into the starting lineup as well, uh, especially with the bigger team. But where are you looking at on on this Hornet squad? 
Yeah, I mean, you bring up Lamelo. I don't know if I can go to him at the at the increased price tag. Um, I, he didn't necessarily knock it out of the park when he started. Um, you know, I don't think it merely matters if he starts to come off the bench. I mean, he's going to get 25, 30 minutes, hopefully. Uh, for his, for whatever reason, Borrego sometimes just plays him 17, 21 minutes, and, and there's not really any rhyme or reason to it besides, you know, I guess he's making mistakes that Borrego wants to talk to him about or <laughs> or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not looking Lamelo's way necessarily in this one, but I am looking at Gordon Hayward at 7,200. Uh, you know, it's just a, a nice price tag for a guy that can light it up. And, you know, just like Tobias Harris on the 76ers side, he's just got a safe floor and he's $100 cheaper. So if you really need to save 100, I'd rather have Tobias, but um, Gordon Hayward's not a bad choice either. But the uh, guy I'm really looking at, the guy I have the most interest in, Definitely, as you mentioned, Miles Bridges. He's going to probably slide in that starting lineup. Um, he's going to probably be playing with LaMelo Ball. And, man, it's been like a Mellow Miles, you know, highlight reel all season. Like, these guys have disconnected <laughs> on so many oops and so and so many great plays. And, uh, you know, I think he, he likes playing with the guys. So, you know, 4600 is a re- really, really nice price tag for a guy that's got a lot of upside. Um, the floor could fall out, so you know that, that possibility is always there with, with Miles Bridges if his shots stop falling and, and whatnot. But um, but I do like that play. Forty six hundred is a really good trade price tag. Yeah, and and he's my favorite play on the team too at that price tag. He should start and he should see a very good amount of minutes. There's really not many other power forward options that they can play that are versatile uh, on this team. So I think he's going to get a, a hefty load of minutes there. And another guy I'm looking at. Right below him, assuming Terry Rosier is out, is Malik Monk. I mean, if he's going to be, if they're going to let him play, if, if Borrego is going to let him play and he's going to shoot as much as he wants to shoot, uh, 4K is not a bad price tag. Uh, if you think this game gets out of hand, he's going to take even more shots. So I don't mind paying that price tag. He's more of a GPP guy to me, obviously not not safe. And I also don't mind Hayward. I don't know how much um, exposure I will have to him, but it's a pretty good matchup and uh, he's only seven two now. His price tag suppressed. Uh, you mentioned Lamelo Ball. Funny, he he was in the mid five Ks two games ago, and now he's back up to seven K. I'm just not going to pay for that, especially if Simmons goes on to Ball more than he does Hayward. Uh, that's not something that I want to <laughs> I want to pay for. <clears throat> um, but yeah, man, you're ready to go over to Indy Milwaukee. Yeah, let's do it. All right, uh, that was a that was a quick one. I like it. And I'll uh, I'll jump into the spread for this one, which we have one. The over under is two thirty two at the moment, uh, and the Bucks are eight and a half point home favorites on this. We do not have an injury report from the Bucks; they did not submit one, and the Pacers played tonight, so they also did not submit one. Uh, but we do have DFS to talk about, and I'll jump in with the the, the Pacers quick. Uh, so I'm looking at everybody here. And I think Sabonis, I like how he's a little lower. Uh, Brogdon got a couple hundred dollar raise. um, And he's going against his former team. But I don't fully want to take the plunge with anybody on this squad too much just because there's so many other options. Uh, this the, the Bucks have been their Bucks have been one of the best defenses in the league the last couple of years. And Drew Holiday only makes it better. And I think these guys are just very fairly priced. Do I hate taking a stab at Sabonis and Brogdon at that 8K? No, I, I I think the floor is pretty pretty good for them. I just don't know if the upside is quite necessarily there in this type of matchup. Um, it's one of those games that this is going to be a good game, but I don't know how much exposure I'll have with nine other games on the slate for, for this side. How about you, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much there with you. One thing I will say, though, is, um, you know, that you say that the, the the total's 232. I mean, that's a really attractive total, game total there. And uh, I do kind of want some exposure to that on this slate, even if I don't like the pricey guys. So I was kind of looking at, at some of the more mid-tier guys to lower, you know, lower price guys. And uh, Miles Turner really popped out at me at 6,700. I mean, the dude has a fractured hand. He hasn't been playing super well since he came back from that. Um, but, he, I mean, that, that upside's like, it's entirely there. You know, he's probably a better GPP play. But I think uh, if he hits, I mean, 6700 if you got to save a few thousand dollars, I mean, it's a really good play, I think. Um, and then the other guy I would maybe look at would be Doug McDermott. And I just think he's a, he's a solid floor guy, 4700 He's up against, the, you know, the Bucks defense. Not ideal. It's never ideal to be up against the Bucks defense. But again, I'm looking at this game total. I'm thinking, you know, somebody's got to score these points. It's an eight and a half point spread, but, you know, at a 232 game total, uh, I just don't think it's going to be a blowout. It doesn't feel like it's going to be a blowout. So I am looking those at those two guys at the Pacers. All right. I like it. And sliding over to the Bucks side, similar similar thing here. I, I think all of these guys are, are I think, 
uh, Giannis, Middleton, Holiday, they're all pretty much in play to me. Uh, but I, I think they're fairly priced. And on Holiday, I knew this was coming sooner rather than later. We were getting him very cheap in the mid-6Ks for a while. And now he's back almost 8K. He's still putting up value, and he still could put up value in this matchup. Um, I don't know how much exposure I'll have to him. I'll probably go more Middleton in this one. Uh, but I just I don't know how much exposure I'll have to the top-end guys here. I think Giannis, if he wasn't if he was mid mid ten and a half k a little bit, I would probably want a little bit more to him. Uh, there is a guy that we're going to get to later, right around that same price tag, who's just in the ideal matchup for uh, any any person. So I'm going to lean more towards there. Won't have too much Giannis, but I can't fault anybody for playing these guys. I'm going to have a little less exposure because of it, though. Um, and if I did want to have more some exposure to this game, I'm going to look at a guy like Dante DiVincenzo, who hasn't been playing well lately, but I think a good 20, 27 minutes or so on this matchup, he's gonna he should be able to bring back some value here. Yeah, I can't argue with that, man. And and uh, I'm still looking at the top guys, Giannis and, and Chris Middleton. But like you said, I think you know, I think there's better plays with that money on the on the slate. So not looking too hard at those guys. But like you said, I can't really fault you know anybody mm-hmm. for playing those guys. I mean, they're always they're always good for a good game. Uh, don't really like anyone else on this Bucks squad, but I did want to mention that DJ uh, Augustine finally had that blow up game I've been waiting for. <laughs> And I missed out on it. And now he's 3,300, and, he, and I'm, I'm not going to be chasing that. But uh, he did have a good game finally. I think it was a blowout, so he, he got a few more minutes. So I was happy to see that, but uh, not chasing this one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, and this is the game that I think a lot of people, the next one, are have been waiting for. Uh, and we have a, for it, it's the Mavericks at the Hawks. We have a 222 and a half game total. It seems a little bit low, and the Mavericks are one and a half point road dogs. Uh, on the injury report, we have just nobody on the on the Mavs that are not on the not in the G League, and on the Hawks we have uh, Bogdanovich, Chris Dunn, Hunter. Uh, they are all out, and Onyeki Okungwu is questionable for this one. Um, but let's start on the Dallas side, man. I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but I'll let you jump in on the Dallas side and. Can you play Luca, or can you play anybody else outside of Luca? I mean, I think we have to be on Luca, don't we? I mean, it's just <laughs> he's up against uh, Trey Young. You know, it's it's the Hawks. I mean, yeah, that two twenty five, two twenty two and a half uh, game total seems low for this game. I mean, I just think it's going to be it's going to be a shootout between the point guards. I mean, you would think, you would hope uh, that would be the best for basketball and the best for entertainment purposes. So I do like I do like Luca a lot. That's he's probably my favorite. Uh, guys over 10k uh, or 10k or over I should say even over Embiid or or Giannis but um, so Luke is probably the guy I'd go to to spend all that money um, the other guy on the the Mavs I'm looking at is Josh Richardson you know he had a good game last game 4500 I'm only looking at him in cash games though because I think it's go- his ownership's going to be sky high when people you know chase that that last uh, big game he had uh, I've been looking his way and, and trying to hit on him having a big game of course I missed on him too but uh, it's all good I think uh, after that big one he's going to have a lot of people going his way so um, what do you what do you like yeah and I think we're pretty much on the same page so far uh, yeah I alluded to it if I'm going to spend up I'm going to go Luca anytime someone's playing Trey Young you're in a better position uh, Luca is coming off missing a game winner and he looked pretty pissed off about it his team is losing has lost six in a row uh, and you get Trey Young now to take all, all, out your aggression against who just doesn't know how to play defense or not th- that he doesn't know how to play he's just very small and he's not good at it uh, it's a, just a mismatch advantage for him so I'm going to pay up and, and play Luca here and outside of Luca, I'm with you too I, I like Josh Richardson uh, at 4,500, I would have thought his price tag would have jumped back up to the the mid 5Ks. Now that he played back to back games over 35 minutes, he took 16 shots in the last one. I don't expect him to make uh, shoot 56 from the field again, 56% from the field again, uh, and score 40 DK points. But this is not a uh, a hefty price tag for a guy who is going to be playing a lot of minutes. He's probably going, he's going to be the third banana, uh, and Porzingis is going to be battling down low with two guys that are are pretty good and Capella. And, and John Collins on, on defense. So I think Josh Richardson steps up in this one, and it's just a very, very good price tag for me. Um, but how about how about on the Atlanta side, man? Uh, can, you, can you play Trey Young opposite Luka at 9-5? And, and are you looking at anybody else over here? Uh, I mean, I can't fault for someone playing Trey. I'm, I'm not um, 
personally looking that way. Uh, not not really into that. Um, but you did mention that Porzingis is going to be banging down low with Clint, Clint Capella. And Clint Capella, I have a lot, a lot of interest in. 8,800. Uh, you know, kind of a suppressed uh, price tag for this guy. He's, he's been really just knocking it out of the park when he's been playing, when he's had been called on. And, um, you know, not to, not to be offensive, but the uh, Dallas Mavericks have awful, awful <laughs> centers on their team. <laughs> Uh, no one that can really, really hang with this guy. And, uh, you know, he's going to get some blocks on Porzingis. He's going to get some blocks on, on some other guys. So, um, you know, I, I love that price tag at 800 for him. I, I'm going to play him a lot. Uh, the other guy I'd look at on the on the Hawks side of the ball would be Cam Reddish, 4,600. He's had a rough couple of games, but, I mean, there's no DeAndre Hunter, and he played 32 and 39 minutes his last two games. So, at some point, that shot's going to start falling, and he's going to really kill that 4,600 price tag. So, um, I keep playing him, uh, and this is one guy I'm not going to come off of and miss miss out on when he blows up and has a big <laughs> And So, uh, those are the two guys I like. All right, man. And, yeah, I don't mind playing Trey Young, too, as a, as a running back guy. He's had 50 points in – like pretty much most of the last games uh, over 50 points. So I think there's still value to be had there. I don't know if a true 70 point ceiling type of game is going to be in the cards, but the, the floor is safe for him if you're paying up. So I don't mind that. Um, but if I'm everywhere else, I'm looking, I, I think I, I like, I don't mind Capella. I just think that's a, for me, it's, it's too high of a price tag and I don't want to pay up there. Uh, he's just not one of those guys that I look at and say, Ooh, I want him. I know he's been playing great. He's just, for me, it, it's uh, I, I can't pay 88 for him, uh, but I do like Cam Reddish and I do like Herder. I think those are two pretty solid price tags. Assuming that we have DeAndre uh, Hunter, he's not playing in this one, um, and Bogdanovich. The the whole thing with these Hawks wings were where are the minutes going to go? And two of the the five guys are out. Gallinari is still getting ramped up, so he's not really a threat to steal any minutes from these two guys. And in this type of environment, in this type of matchup. I don't mind going to those Hawks wings with uh, a 46 and a 56 hundred dollar price tag, but I do like Josh Richardson better than Cam Radish. If um, you're asking me, who do I like better at pretty much the same price? 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope. It's Geico. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, give it thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The wake up early, do a little studying, take the dog out, finish that audio book. Until the very end. Finish that workout, then stop by McDonald's for breakfast and somehow manage to do it all before that 10 a.m. meeting meal. There's a meal for every morning at McDonald's. Mix and match a sausage McMuffin, sausage biscuit, sausage burrito, or any size premium roast coffee. Any two for two bucks. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Um, but yeah, man, uh, we can jump on to the, the next one. We have the Knicks at the Bulls. We already did three games. We're going pretty fast through this. Uh, we're kind of, we're mostly on the same page here. Uh, but we have the the Knicks and the Bulls in a rematch from the other night. Uh, and this one has a 216 and a half over under, which is the lowest of the spreads that we have uh, and the or of the game totals that we have. And the spread is the Bulls are four point home favorites on the injury report. Uh, I got to scroll down. I don't know why they have them at the bottom of the, the injury report and they have them right in the middle of the card. Uh, <laughs> this game starts at eight. PM Eastern Standard Time, and we have the Bulls have Wendell Carter Jr. as out and Otto Porter Jr. as probable. And on the Knicks side of the ball, we have uh, Nerlens Noel as probable, Austin Rivers as probable, and everybody else on G League assignment. Which is fun. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. is on G League assignment. How have <laughs> he has fallen pretty hard? Uh, but let's start with the Knicks, man. Is there what are you looking at at the Knicks? I mean. They just played the uh, the other night, and there was some very big games here with Randall. Uh, quickly played really well. Burke scored 18. Um, Nerlens played a lot of more a lot more minutes than Mitch. But uh, where would you look at on the Knicks here? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, whenever you go up against the Bulls, you got to attack the backcourt. Um, so I'm really looking at R.J. Barrett. And I'm really looking at Emmanuel quickly. Uh, I wouldn't play both of them in the same lineup, but, you know, one or the other I, I like a lot. Um, I 
would probably stay away from Alfred Payton just because uh, I don't know, man, that, that guy, he just has such clunkers. I, I don't find him safe <laughs> at all. Uh, you know, if you want, you want to run him in a GPP, that's fine. But, um, you know, Kobe White doesn't play any defense in the end of Zach Levine. So, uh, and I should know because I'm a Bulls fan. So I, I watch him every game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just the backcourt's going to go off. So RJ Barrett or Emmanuel quickly, those are the two guys I'd be looking at. Um, and then the other guy I would look at on the New York side would be New Orleans Noel, uh, 3,700. Uh, you know, he's, he's probably gonna be a popular pick just because he's so, so low in the salary, but, uh, he had a really bad game the last game. I was watching pretty closely. He just like, he couldn't catch the ball. I don't know what was going on with him, but like he mm-hmm. dropped the ball like four or five times. So he missed out on some points, missed out on some, uh, steals and, and things like that. So, uh, I, I like him at that price point as a, a really solid, um, salary saver. I like that. Um, yeah, and I, I don't, I, I think Noel at 3,700, even if he, I don't think he's going to play the majority of the game again. Uh, but even if he gets 20 or so minutes, that's pretty good. He, he usually brings back value around that price tag. And I'm with you. I, I don't mind attacking uh, RJ Barrett. I like quick quickly has been doing a lot more than just scoring as well. Getting, getting some assists some steals, uh, pitching in some rebounds. So I think that's a fair price tag for him in this matchup as well. And I don't mind going back to Julius Randall, but there are so many other options here that I'm not, I'm not going to be doing it. Uh, but, it is a good matchup for him. Uh, Markkinen isn't the greatest of defenders, and if they bring in a backup power forward, Randall has a, a big size advantage on them. So I don't mind it there, but I'm just there's so many options here that I'm not going to be doing it. But I'm 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 with you with the other guys. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, with Randall too. I mean, I, I think he's a a fine play, but uh, there's just better ones out there for sure. Yeah, if you're doing a, a tournament and a GPP. He's been, he, he'll be a pretty solid pivot option because I don't expect him to be highly owned with all these options out there. But for cash, I mean, there's just so many that uh, you don't need to go that route. <clears throat> but how about on the bull side, man? Um, I can jump into this one. We just saw Markkinen drop 30 points for two straight games. Unfortunately for me, he doesn't do too much else other than hit threes and, and score the basketball. He's not bringing back uh, many rebounds barely any assists and there are some defensive stats but they're very few uh, and they're maybe one steal or a block each game uh, not both uh, so for 7100 that's when the price tag gets a little out of hand for me uh, that I don't want to pay it Zach Levine I just don't like playing people against the Bulls in general or not the Bulls against the Knicks in general they just slow the game down and, and try and beat you up typical Tom Thibodeau type uh, basketball uh, so I don't think I'm going to go with that route for 85 with so many other options uh, but the one there's there's two guys that are looking at me right now, and that's Thad Young. I mean, if this guy's going to be the playmaker, Thad Young, that he continues to be the last three games at 5900, he's put it up 39, 41, 43 uh, DK points. If he's going to play 30 minutes or so in the same exact matchup and do similar thing, distributing the ball and grabbing his rebounds with some some points in there, in there, that's a very good price tag for a guy that's uh, playing really well and might be playing some of the best basketball of his career at his age, especially. Uh, and then the other guy I would be looking at is Pat Williams. He's still playing a ton of minutes and he's only 3,600 now. I'm not going to go to him regularly, but that's, you're getting a starter who's playing uh, nearly 30 minutes and, and he's only 3,600. So if you're penny pinching and you're, you're looking deep down and you want a safe minutes for, he would be a guy that I'd look at. Man, get get out of my head, man. Uh, <laughs> I've got the same two guys. Uh, yeah, Pat Pat will. I mean, it's just the price tag is too appealing for you know for for the minutes he's he's getting, and he's really starting to play some really good basketball. Um, he doesn't look for his, his own shot a whole lot, so I don't know if there's ceilings necessarily there for for cash games. If you need to save some some salary, I do like that option a lot. Uh, Thad Young, fifty nine hundred. I mean, dude, that's just it's still too, they got they got to bring that price tag up. If you watch these games, like. Half of their offensive sets are getting Thad Young the ball in the, in the high post, and then people just make back cuts and, and, and baseline cuts off of that, and he's just finding them like a freaking Magic Johnson down in the post. It's it's ridiculous. He's just uh, he's just running the offense. So I, I think I go to them 100% of my, my life uh, at 5,900. So and, uh, he's a real play. Yeah, and it could stick for, I don't think long term, but it could stick for a couple more games. I mean, Zach Levine and Kobe White, they're not necessarily the playmakers that uh, Billy Donovan was hoping that he could create out of them. So, I mean, Thad Young taking on extra responsibility could be a thing that continues until maybe Wendell Carter comes back and, and they play a little bit different. 
Um, but yeah, man, we're already through four games, we're almost halfway there. We're going to the halfway point here. We have the Los Angeles Clippers on the second night end of a back-to-back against at the Cleveland Cavaliers. There is no spread for this one. Uh, the Clippers don't have an injury report. They just played. And we have on the Cavs side, Della Dova is still out. Uh, Kevin Love, Larry Nance Jr. out. And we have Andre Drummond as questionable. That's going to be very big news. Uh, this game starts at 8 p.m. Hopefully we have the news before 7 o'clock because that kind of changes a lot of things as his back court, um, his front court mate behind him is going to see a lot of minutes if he doesn't play. Uh, but let's start on the Clippers side. Uh, to me, um, I'm not sure if I want to attack these guys. I know they, George and Leonard both got a slight price decrease. But this is the second night of a back-to-back. They might not play. Uh, I probably, I think they will play. But they just came off playing the Nets in what could be a finals uh, preview. So I don't know how much they're going to be up for this game on a back-to-back. And that's just purely speculative. I know they superstars get up when they're playing other superstars and they're playing in big matchups. And then come back the next day, go to Cleveland, uh, and then you're playing a team that probably won't make the playoffs, even though they are playing really well. Uh, but I don't know how much they're going to be in the zone, if you know what I mean, and and give it all they have for however long they're out there for. Uh, Kawhi played 39 minutes tonight. Paul George played uh, 36 minutes tonight. I don't know if they necessarily see the 33-minute mark in this one, so I don't think I'm going to be paying up for them when there are so many other options out there that I feel a lot safer about. Uh, And then outside of that, it's never really wise to trust too many of these guys on a nightly basis, so I'm probably just going to avoid the Clippers. That's solid logic. I, I, I can't I can't really argue against it. Um, from my standpoint, the kind of game story I'm reading into it, though, is um, I think a lot of people do kind of get up for the Cavs just because it's a young, promising core, um, and, and they've, they've had some really good games against some good teams in the past, so I think that, you know, that upset, quote-unquote, potential is always there, so... So the stars kind of kind of get up to play the Cavs, even though they they aren't necessarily the the most intimidating team, uh, and uh, and for that reason, you know, I, I am looking a little bit at Paul George, eighty seven hundred. I'm not not necessarily looking at Kawhi. You know, like you said, as we speak, um, kind of went off and had a really good game tonight. It's kind of a your turn, my turn type team. So, um, Paul Paul George, I could see him having a really good game. I, I could see um, not wanting to spend that money there in cash games. So more more of a GPP play, most definitely. But um, but I do like that play. Um, the other guy I might, might look at is uh, Marcus Morris, you know, if people do sit. But even if they don't, 4500 for for a price tag for a guy that has a really, really decent floor, and he played 28 minutes last game. Um, yeah, he didn't exactly 31 like, tonight, too, with yeah, the two back. So. Yeah, yeah. So he's getting the minutes, and, you know, 4500 is a really good price tag for, for the minutes he's getting. So those are the two guys I'd be looking at. All right, I like it, man. Uh, that's one of our – that's probably the first time we were a little bit different, a little yeah. bit different, which is good. <laughs> I like it. We've been on the same page this one. And um, then I'll jump over onto the Cleveland Cleveland side of the ball. And to me, it just comes down to, is Andre Drummond playing or not? Because if he's not playing, 6,500 for Jared Allen, yes, I'm, I'm going to go back there. Uh, that This guy's going to see 35 minutes a game, or 30, 30 to 35 minutes, even maybe more, at 6,500. That's He's going to, at the very least, he's not going to hurt you. At the very least. Uh, I know Serge Ibaka is very good defender uh, Zub- Zubats is playing a lot better but 6500 for a guy that when he starts and he gets a lot of run uh, there's he's just very good so uh, I'm gonna go there and he's gonna be the main guy I'm looking at I want to play Sexton at 69 and but uh, I just don't feel comfortable with it I, I was hoping a little bit less but I don't mind Garland at, at 59 and uh, a guy that I didn't think I was going to say, Torian Prince at 49. I might have slight exposure. I do think there's some better options, but he does make for a, a GPP pivot for me. Uh, and another guy that we were talking about, we talked about Pat Will playing a lot of minutes. This guy is playing not great either, but if you're going down there and you're looking for, hey, I just need someone to bring back some points, and I want to trust that they ha- they're they playing a lot of minutes. And that's Isaac Okoro at 3,700. Again, uh, that's more of a, a pump play type GPP thing. Uh, but if you'd like safe minutes floors, I don't mind uh, if you have to go that route. Dang, you stole my, my stole my thunder. I, I thought I was <laughs> a little uh, a little little unique here going with Okoro. I, I like Isaac Isaac Okoro uh, a lot, and I, I probably butchered it, that name. I apologize, <laughs> but um, but Isaac. I do like him. Thirty. I'm going to call him the Isaac. It <laughs> thirty seven hundred. 
for uh, for Okoro, though. That's a that's a really good price tag. And uh, you know, honestly, if you look at this Cavs team and you look at you know they're playing the Clippers, who's going to guard Kawhi Leonard? Who's going to bo- guard Paul George? It's going to be Okoro. I mean, he's the only guy that can really fit that mold. Um, he's going to get a lot of run just just strictly for that. He's going to play a lot of defense. I mean, those guys get a lot of usage. If he gets some steals, uh, he can really hit value. So, yeah, I think uh, I think he's probably a better uh, GPP play. I honestly don't even mind playing him in cash just because he's going to get a lot of run. And I just I just see him as having not a, not a great game, but a good game. Um, just because I think he's got a lot of opportunity. He's going to have a lot of. Uh, I mean, that's what that's what he's there for is to play defense mm-hmm. on these guys, and he's going to get a lot of usage usage in that way, quote unquote. It's not really usage, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's steadily improving as a player, uh, even though the stats aren't there. If you're watching him play, he's he's improving both on both ends of the floor, uh, whether it's moving without the ball or, or playing defense on ball, off ball. He's he's improving as a player, and that's what you're hoping for as a as a young rookie who wasn't known for his offense anyway. Uh, and and he's getting a little bit better on both ends, so I like that. Again, not not a huge ceiling, but he's he's steady minutes floor, and then and if that's what you're looking for. Um, but you have anybody else on the Cavs that you want, or should we move it on over to the next game? No, nope, that was the only two. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going Sexton or, or Garland. Uh, they're just too up and down for me, usually for cash games. Uh, don't want to take a stab in GPP. Don't blame me, but not mm-hmm. n- not, not my guys. All right, man. Then we're going to go on to the next one, the Wizards, on the second night of a back-to-back. So we know that we have to watch the news on Russell Westbrook and maybe watch the news on Davis Bertans if they're still treating him with um, kid gloves kind of thing. Uh, so that's going to be big, but this game does start at 8 p.m., so we might not know in time, which is kind of the downfall of that. But uh, we do, I believe we do not have, yep, we do not have a, a spread for this one, but we do have an injury report, not on the Wizards because they just played, uh, but we have a heat injury report, and it's pretty big as usual. Myers Leonard is out for the year. Chris Silva is out. Uh, Mo Harkless is out. And then we have Gabe Vincent. Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, Avery Bradley, all probable. That means they should play, uh, which is awesome. This, this, this Heat team went from no one to everyone now. But let's start on the Wizards side, man. If Westbrook doesn't play, can you go Bradley Beal at 97 with this tougher defensive matchup with multiple people uh, like Beal, Bradley? I'm not Beal. <laughs> Beal is who I'm talking about. Butler, Bradley, who can guard him uh, or can't, are you just looking at some of these ancillary pieces or just avoiding them in general? Yeah, I mean, Beal doesn't get um, you know the greatest matchup here. You're right about that. Butler's a tough defender. Um, but it is the first time he's been under 10K in four games. Um, so, you know, I, I could see playing some Beal. Uh, I like other plays better. Um, I, I wouldn't falter for playing Beal, especially if Westbrook's out. It's going to be a popular play. So definitely not playing him in any GPPs, but, uh, you know, cash games if you want to. I don't see a problem with it. Um, Ish Smith's another guy I'm looking at 4,800, especially if, if Westbrook sits, obviously, you know, he's probably going to slot into that starting role. Uh, I don't know if Neto's going to be back uh, or not. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember if he said he was out or not, but, um, even if he's in, I think Ish Smith gets a start over him because Ish Smith's been playing well and he's just been a solid player for all of his time, time in the NBA, just a solid backup. And whenever he gets the minutes, he pretty, he generally produces a pretty, pretty solid floor. So, uh, 4,800 for that guy. Is uh, is a good price tag, and then the other guy I'd be looking at is Mo Wagner, Mo, Moritz Wagner, uh, forty two hundred. <laughs> he's uh, he's got a great, it's a great salary saver at center. Um, forty two hundred is a, a pretty low price tag. Um, when I was looking at the box score, he had played more than Rolo in the first half, but I think at, in the second half, Rolo, uh, Robin Lopez played more than he did. Um, mm-hmm. But but Mo Wagner is the guy to to uh, to target because he has great better. Much better fantasy points per minute output than than uh, Robin Lopez does. Um, so those would be the three guys I'd be looking at. And speaking of Rolo, he ended with a triple double, at 17, 12, and ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. He's a he's right? a not. A, 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 a <laughs> uh, I did not expect that. I, I don't think anybody would have expected that ten assists from Rolo. Uh, but yeah, I think same same reason. You could play a Beal more in cash, not in uh, GPP. It is he. If Westbrook doesn't play, it's a ton of usage. If Westbrook plays, I don't really. I'm not going to touch either of them. Uh, they're just going to split usage, and it's not a great environment, game environment that I want to totally attack there. Um, knowing that, just like with Giannis and other people, there's so many other options out there that I would rather pay 1300 and go to Giannis or so if I had that that money. But um, yeah, for cash games, no Westbrook. I, I'd like. Beal is a, obviously an option. And I do like your Ish Smith call. Yes, Raul Nito will not play tomorrow uh, or today. So we do have 
Ish Smith at 4,800. That's not a bad option. I also don't mind. My third guy would be uh, Denny Avicii, as I call him. Um, that 3,500. I think he's slowly starting to ramp up. He played 23 minutes tonight. He, he didn't play much in the first one, but if he's ready to start ramping up more, there, especially if Westbrook doesn't play and there's no Nito, uh, they're going to give him more of a facilitator role, which he's been pretty good at um, when he's gotten the opportunity and when he's been healthy. And at, for 3,500, that's another guy that you're just digging in the bargain bin for. as Another rookie, I should say, also, uh, that you're digging in the bargain bin for. Uh, and especially if Bertans doesn't play, possibly, there should be extra minutes to go around for a guy like uh, Avicii. And yes, I love calling him that name. Uh, but that's <laughs> um, that's that just better better opportunity. I and mean, he's not going to draw the toughest assignment defensively. That's going to go straight to Beal. So he does have, to me, he has some upside there as uh, if, if we get Westbrook not playing and, and even Bertans that it gives him a little boost as well. Um, but what about on Miami, man, knowing that they are playing one of the worst defense defenses in the league, if we can even call them a defense. Uh, and then they might not be at full strength again, but the heat are now getting back to full strength and their pricing is kind of more or less reflect, reflecting that. Yeah, I think I think a lot of these guys still have pricing as if you know they're getting all the opportunity in the world, and and they're just not. You know, they're all they're all back, they're healthy, or they're a full lineup now. Um, you know, Tyler Hero, I think he was sixty eight hundred, if I remember correctly. I, to, yep. I think that's what it was. Um, I, I'm not like I'm not going on there at sixty eight hundred. I mean. I, I do actually have though my favorite play is in this game and it, and it is Jimmy Butler at 8400. Um, you know he's probably my favorite play just because of like you said the matchup and uh, he looked really good in this first game back and you know he's had a long time out. He's hungry. This guy likes to win. He's a competitor. So um, I love the Jimmy Butler play. I'm, I'm probably going to have him in, in all my lineups um, that I can fit him into. Um, the only other guy I'd really look at in the Heat though, just price wise, is is Kelly Olynyk. 4800 I mean, I just think he has a, a swallowable price, as we like to say here, Paul, <laughs> uh, for, uh, for, the, for a pretty decent floor. I mean, he, he does have the floor fall out every now and then, just kind of disappears in a few games here and there. But this season, he's been pretty solid. So um, I, I like that price for Kali Linick. Yeah, and, and I like Butler, too. I think he's a awesome price tag, uh, 84. He played the, the two games that he came back. He's played 34 and 37 minutes, taken – uh, an average of 18 shots in both games, an average of 50 and a half fantasy points in both games. So he looked like he hasn't missed a beat. And against this hapless defense, uh, he, he will have his chance to shine again. Uh, everybody else, I would love Bam if he wasn't 93, but damn, that's a that's a hefty price tag to pay. A great matchup, great matchup, but uh, not on a 10 game slate when there's so many other options in that range. I just can't can't go there. Um, the other guy that I would look at on this, you mentioned Olenek. I think he's in a good matchup too. Uh, but I like this would be the the time that I could attack Duncan Robinson. I don't normally attack him, but when I see that there's an opportunity for wide open shots and he's one of the best pure shooters in the game, that's when I'll attack him. And I don't mind paying the 55. I won't have too much exposure, but I think he can hit. Uh, I, I don't think six to seven threes is out of the question. And and upside for other stuff around that too. I just think this is a matchup where he's going to get open looks and he hits them more often than not. <clears throat> um, yeah. And then we could slide on over to, ooh, we have six games that were done. Uh, we, the last game at 8 PM Eastern standard time, we'll slide on over to the Houston Rockets at the OKC thunder. And this is a rematch from the blowout that we saw the other night uh, and on the injury report. I hate how they do the injury reports sometimes. They have them all different than what DraftKings has. Or DraftKings has them all over the place that the injury report has, however you want to look at it. Uh, but the, the Rockets have – we're not going to have John Wall for this. So that that changes a lot of things on the Rockets' side. Uh, we all, still don't have Kevin Porter Jr. He's in the G League now. David Nwaba is out. Uh, and Dante Exum is, is also out. Uh, but on the Thunder, we have Shea. He's not playing. Um we have George Hill, he's out. Ty Jerome, still out. And Trevor Reza, I don't think he's ever going to play for the Thunder. But those first two guys, SGA and George Hill, that is a lot of value. But we'll start with the away team in the Rockets. Oh, I think we have a spread for this one. Uh, yes, we do. It's 221.5 is the over-under. And the Rockets are 6.5-point road 
favorites. Uh, but let's start on the the Rocket side. There's no John Wall, so we get more usage for Wood, Oladipo, Gordon, everybody out there. Uh, who are you looking at on this side? Yeah, I mean, j- just without John Wall, you got to look at Wood. You got to look at Oladipo. 8,600 for Wood. I mean, he hits a softball matchup here. Um, you know, who's going to stop him? I mean, maybe maybe El Horford if, if El Horford plays. I don't even know if El Horford plays in this game with all these people out. Uh, who knows? But um, Oladipo, 7,800. 7, uh, he's just going to have a lot of ball handling responsibilities, and he's going to be in a lot of PRs with with Wood. So I like both those guys. I like stacking those guys, as a matter of fact, um, if you need to and if you want to. Um, the other guy I look at, you know, DeMarcus Cousins, 5,200. Uh, yeah, his role's in flux. It's kind of hard to, to nail him down, so he's more of a G- GPP play, but 5,200 is just a steal for a guy that, you know, has the potential to put the, the points per minute that he does. And, um, you know, without Wall, I think they're just going to need all bodies, you know, everyone on deck just to um, just to compete here. I don't think they're really going to take it easy against the, the Thunder. I don't know if it'll be a blowout, maybe, um, but if, it's, uh, if it is or isn't, I think DeMarcus Cousins still gets a pretty decent run. Yeah, and, and I'm with you too on on Wood and Oladipo. Uh, the only thing I think that could stop them is time. If they don't get enough time because this game gets out of hand. Uh, and, and you mentioned that Horford might not play. This is the front end of a back-to-back for the uh, Thunder. So maybe he usually is sitting out one of those two games. Maybe they just say, okay, we'll give up this game and play uh, tomorrow because we might have uh, Alexander back. So we'll see about that. But, yeah, I like those two guys. And and my third banana here is is Eric Gordon. I think he should slide back into the starting lineup. And um, he usually, when one of those guys are out, he's going to get a few extra shots. He's shooting regardless anyway. But I think he should jump up from the mid-20s to maybe high 20s, low 30s, depending on the score of this game. And and when he gets the opportunity, he usually brings back uh, good good value there at, at 5400 but let's go on over to the thunder side which is value 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 we don't have gilgis alexander we don't have george hill that's at least two spots open in the starting lineup uh, that are normally for them and and a lot of usage from sga possibly no horford as you mentioned uh, but where can we target here man i think if you're looking for cheap value this is the team that you're going to go for yeah I, I mean i just love i love a thunder because they're they're, they're not a good team, but they stay competitive in every game. Um, they seem to, at least. I mean, there's blowouts, obviously, here and there, but uh, but they play hard. And, um, you know, these guys are all low-priced, and uh, there's a lot of people you can play here. Um, you know, Basley, Basley, uh, which one is that? I can't remember. Darius Basley. Um, they're going to need his offense there, 5,200. Um, he's a really solid play just because, you know, he's got to. Someone's got to score because SG is out. <laughs> Um, he's really the next guy up, um, and if it's not him, then Theo Melodon, um, the French you know uh, point guard, uh, had a good game last game, and he just feels super chalky here. Forty three hundred, uh, you know, I would definitely go to him in, in all my cash games for sure. Um, I don't know if I play him in GPP. I think a lot of people are going to flock to him, um, but you know, in cash games, he's a really really safe bet to to hit some value at forty three hundred. Uh, the other guy I'd add, um, well, two other guys I would add actually. Uh, Kenrich Williams, 3,000. He had 20 minutes last game. He's a, just a really solid, solid GPP play uh, without uh, SGA in. I think he's going to get a lot of run. He's put up big numbers before this, this season already, and uh, he's got he's got just floor pricing. So I, I like that GPP play a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the other guy I like as a GPP play, it's got to be Alexei Pokushevsky. And I did say that full name there. Poku, Pokemon. <laughs> the Pokemon. The Pokemon. He is... Uh, Incredible to watch because he's just, you know, a super tall dude. I actually heard somebody uh, describe him as a very tall Stewie uh, from Family <laughs> Guy. And he does look a little bit like Stewie from Family Guy. But, uh, no, he's a lot of fun to watch. He's got a lot of skill. And I, I, this might be the, the, the poker game. I don't know. It, it might be. I might be calling this right here. <laughs> they were intending to send him down to the G League after Monday's game. Uh, but with Gilgis Alexander out, now they're, they need the other roster spot so he stayed here so now this would should be his last time before he goes down to the g league bubble to make a name for himself so i don't don't mind that either and yeah i'm with you there's just so much value here this is the game that you're going to look for value uh we can go back to door at 4400 if uh it fits your build you can look at theo maladon at 4300 if horford doesn't play we go back to isaiah roby at 3600 that's just 
always chalk when he doesn't play. I like the rich one Williams too. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I call him, the rich one. Um, at, at bare minimum value, that's that's very good. And I like he's my dude Diallo uh, at 4,500. I think he's going to jump into the starting lineup. Yes, I'm throwing all my nicknames out there. But uh, if without Alexander and, and, and Hill, I think Maladon may, might – jump over to starting at point guard, and then he's my dude is going to get the shooting guard job or Dort gets shooting guard and he gets small forward. But, I mean, all of these guys are just very cheap without SGA there, who's just the usage guy on this team. And then George Hill, who's taking minutes and uh, taking usage as well. Maybe he he doesn't do a lot with it numbers-wise, but he still controls the ball a lot. There's just a lot to like on this team, and I'm with you if – uh, especially if Horford is out, it just adds more to the the thing here. But uh, a lot of these guys, that's, when I'm fitting people into my lineup with 4K or, or whatnot, uh, a lot of it's going to be in this game, uh, in this matchup. And they're all pretty much blowout proof too because they're all young guys that need more experience. Yeah, man. And we just saw Nas Little go off for 30 real-life points. So you know, <laughs> these are still NBA players. I mean, they're not they're – not, Great players, but they're NBA players, and any one of them can go off. So, um, you know, pick and choose and, and find yours and, and go with it, man. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, <clears throat> I do think uh, Diallo has the the highest upside, and he has the cool – my favorite nickname because he's my dude. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll say one last time before we move on to the, the Wolves against the Spurs. This has a 223 over under, and the Spurs are nine-point home favorites. Uh, we have an injury report here for this team. Uh, the Wolves have uh, Culver is out. A Towns is out again. Russell and Wancho are questionable, and Nas is probable. And on the Spurs side, we have Aldridge out. That's a good one. Uh, and then we have, uh, that's the only guy not on the G League assignment right now. Uh, but let's start with the, the, the Wolves, and I'll jump into it. Um, on the Wolves side, it's going to depend on if Russell's out or in. If he's playing, ah. Uh, He's not a bad matchup at 68, but he's just been playing so poorly, and he I don't know how healthy he truly is that there's, as a lot of other guys, there's a lot of other options here that we can feel safer on knowing that they're healthy. Um, but if you go that route in a, in a pivot route, in a GPP, I don't mind it because a lot of people are going to look at him and not really want him. But this game does start at 8.30 p.m., so he's not the safest guy to lock in there if we don't have news on if he's playing. Uh, if he's not playing, though, I can go back. I like Anthony Edwards at 5,400. Just extra usage, extra responsibility, extra ball handling, extra playmaking. Uh, same with Ricky Rubio. He's probably going to jump into the starting lineup at 4,500. Extra responsibility, extra ball handling. This guy, when he's playing 30-something minutes, he's a good point guard. He's not $4,500 worth. Uh, and then the last guy, if if there's no Russell, uh, McLaughlin. At bare minimum 3K when he's getting 26 minutes or so and, and with room to grow, that's an easy price tag for him to bring back value. So for me, the the Wolves revolve, does Russell play or not? And we're probably not going to know that early. I would hope so. And if we do know that early, there's some value to be found here. Yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, uh, really, the, the way I've been approaching the Wolves pretty much all season uh, since Cat went down is, you know, if Russell plays, I look at him. Um, and here I think he's a, he's a decent GPP play. I wouldn't play him in cash. Um, if he doesn't play, um, then I look at Malik Beasley and I look at Ricky Rubio. Uh, Malik Beasley, 6,400. Rubio, 4,500. I mean, Beasley's just going to have more more shots coming his way. And like you said, Rubio's just going to get in that starting lineup and it's he's going to distribute the ball. Um, those are really the only three uh, three guys that I look at on the Wolves. Typically, if you want to take a stab at Nas Reed and GPPs, that makes a lot of sense. He, he's you know can go off here and there, um, but but really that that's it. Uh, I don't have a lot of interest in this game. Yeah, and on the other side, uh, I do have some more interest, uh, a little bit more interest. I'm looking at Murray at mid six four now. Uh, we're starting to get he he jumped all the way up to eight eight one a little while ago, and then was in the mid sevens. We're starting to get him back to a, a price that we can like him at. But with Derek White coming back, it gives slight pause. So they've never totally gotten, <laughs> I want to say, along. But when they've been playing together, they've never gotten, uh, it doesn't bring out the best in them. So I'll have some pause there, but that's still a good price tag. And But the guy that I'm 100% looking at over here, maybe I don't play him in every lineup, but Jakob Pertl. Uh, there's no Aldridge, and this guy's going to get 25, maybe 30 minutes. 
in this matchup against the Wolves. Okay, 4,600, easy money for me. Yep, play him, do it. No LMA. Um, you got to play Jakopodl. Um, He's one of my favorite uh, you know, bargain plays for GPPs anyways, and without LMA, he just becomes a really good play. Um, I like Kelvin Johnson's 6100 a little bit uh, too. He just he feels blowout proof because he's of his age. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't really looked at the box scores, but um, I feel like he's going to be out there, uh, even if they're blowing this team out. Um, you know, DeMar DeRozan, 6900 I'd look that way too, just because it's just a really sexy price tag for DeMar DeRozan. I know yeah. he burned some people a couple games ago, but that's such a low price tag. I mean, if this game does end up being a little bit competitive, then. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna have the ball in his hands a lot, and uh, you know it's just, he's gonna put up some value there at six nine hundred. Yeah, playing playing the Wolves is just a fast paced game, um, and the Spurs are playing fast too. So there there might be more than a handful of guys that do a lot of damage here. Uh, so it's something to keep an eye on. <clears throat> but I think I'm with you. I think just Purtle Purtle Power is just a great play. Uh, but let's jump on over to the last two games of the night. This one starts at 9.30 p.m. It is the Phoenix Suns at the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, and we have a 224 game total with the Suns as two and a half road favorites. Uh, two and a half point road favorites. I, I forgot to say the point there. Uh, and on the Suns side, we have Devin Booker as probable. We have Dario Saric, Cameron Payne as out and we have Abdil Nader as questionable on the Pelican side. We have uh, Najee Marshall as questionable, and Stephen Adams, that's the big one there, as questionable as well. Uh, let's start with the the Sun side. Uh, looking at the price tags, knowing Booker's back, knowing Chris Paul has been playing like a 24 year old Chris Paul. Uh, DeAndre Ayton has looked like rebounding like Charles Barkley, the the Dave Chappelle skit. Um, but can you can you go to these guys with this price tag in a matchup that seems weird because the Pelicans should be a team with Van Gundy also that wants to run the ball, but they're they're not. They they have athletes in there. Um, they don't have shooters, but they don't run as much. But that's for another day. But can you play any of these Suns guys? Yeah, I mean, I just um, I know there's been talk about the Pels playing with some more pace, and you know, I'd love to see it. Um, I, I'm kind of in the show me phase, though. I, I don't believe <laughs> it until I see it, you know. And mm-hmm. and uh, they're just a team in turmoil right now. And I I just I have little to no interest in this game. The Suns, um, you know, they're all great players, and that that's part of the problem is that they just share the ball so well. Uh, Chris Paul's really been killing it recently, like you said, but I don't know if that keeps up. And a lot of that was because um, you know Devin Booker was out or, or hobbled up a little bit, and so. I just don't know if I can go to any of these guys at the price tag. So I really don't. I'm not interested in the Suns. Um, I do have some interest on the other side of the ball, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there quick because I'm with you. Uh, I don't really want any interest in the Suns. Just like I mentioned the the Bucks and, and the Pacers, I think this is going to be a pretty competitive game. Just don't really want to – I'm looking for people to exceed their value in the price tag, and I think I could find it elsewhere. Safer. Yep. Well, let's jump on over to the the other side of the ball. You said you had a couple guys for us. I do, I do. Um, yeah, Lonzo Ball, fifty seven hundred. Uh, it's just a very nice price tag for a really solid floor. He's starting to play well again. Um, you know, didn't look healthy for a while, but now he's starting to look healthy again. So I think his price tag is going to come up to that, you know, mid six thousand range again. And uh, so just take advantage while it's there. Fifty seven hundred, really, really good price tag for him. So he's one guy I actually wouldn't look at in this game. The other guy is a GPP play, and uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, um, NAW forty five hundred. This guy has the ability to explode at any given game, uh, and the Pels are really, really interested in, in giving him some minutes. They're trying to get rid of JJ Redick to get this guy more minutes. Um, you know, they're invested, so uh, he's going to put up a lot of shots if they're falling. Uh, forty five hundred is a pretty nice price tag, and so I like him for GPPs. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't mind playing ball on this side. Uh, 5,700, I, I, like you said, he should be in the mid six Ks. Uh, so we do have some meat on the bone there until that jumps up a little bit to where we can play him. I won't totally go on board. I just don't like this game environment. And I think we have other options around there, but I think that is a good play. Um, uh, and he's probably, the, he's the only guy I would be looking at in this, in this game, uh, for the price point, <clears throat> but we have one get last game left. In the Boston Celtics at the Sacramento Kings, we don't have a Celtics injury report, and that's something that we're gonna need very soon because uh, we will be seeing a uh, they're they playing tonight, but we will be seeing a back to back for them, and that means is Kemba Walker going to play? Uh, we have a Peyton Prichard, um, 
Fast P, as they like to call him. They said he might be playing in this one, so that's something to keep an eye on. I thought he was going to be out longer. And we know Marcus Smart is not going to be playing. So at the very least, we know all that on their side of the ball. And on the Kings, we have uh, Daquan Jeffries is out pretty much for the year, and that's the only important guy. But let's start. I'll start, jump into this Celtics team. Uh, Kemba Walker, that is going to be something that we need to know beforehand. This is the late game. Uh, this is start the only game that starts at 10 p.m., so we need to know if he's playing or not way beforehand. Um, but I have a feeling he's probably not ready for back-to-backs. I don't know. That's just a, a just a hunch. And if he's not, that means Jeff Teague probably slides into the starting lineup. Or if if Fast P is healthy, maybe he does, or if they both split time. That's another thing that we'll have to keep an eye on. I don't mind either of those guys at 47 and 3300 respectively. Uh, if there's no Kemba Walker. But the one guy I'm looking at mainly here is Jason Tatum. I didn't start with him, but I will end with him. Jason Tatum at 8,900 against this Kings team. If they do go smaller and and um, and have him against Marvin Bagley, uh, there's not a chance in any world that Marvin Bagley can guard Jason Tatum. Harrison Barnes can try. Uh, He probably won't do great at it, but he has been playing better. I just really like Jason Tatum in this matchup, and he's my favorite play on this squad. As as he usually is, I I feel you there. I, I mean I can't uh, can't argue against that. I like Gene LeBron at seventy nine hundred too. Um, just the lower price tag. I mean, I think these guys are gonna you know put it on the Kings. Now if they have to play uh, the fourth quarter or have to play the fourth quarter, that's that's kind of up in the air. I mean, who knows? The Kings aren't really a good team. They've been playing well recently. They've won I think three of the last four. And uh, so, you know, they're playing better basketball, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to see the Celtics blowing these guys out. They're going to win handily. I mean, I think that's pretty much the game story here. Um, I would also look at Tice at 4,800 uh, just for the price tag. And, and, you know, like you said, I mean, I, the interior defense of the Kings is, isn't great. Maybe they play Hassan Whiteside if they have a real big trouble with it, but, um, you know, they haven't really been giving him solid minutes or, or reliable minutes. Um there's one other guy I'd look at for GPP. It's on the Celtics, though. It's uh, it's always Robert. Big Rob. Williams. Yes, <laughs> I just love him. I love him. He's he's got so much uh, you know, fantasy point per minute uh, potential. And if he ever gets those minutes, man, it's just it's game time. And if this game does get out of hand, he's gonna get in there and play. So, um, he's a GPP target. And it's worth noting that uh, against the Warriors tonight, this game is currently still being playing while we're recording. They did go big in the starting lineup and started Tice and Tristan Thompson. Uh, so that means. Robert Williams, extra minutes for him as the lone backup center on the team. So there, that is to look uh, something to look forward to. And we might not have Kemba Walker, so they might be forced to do it again. Uh, so Rob, Rob is pretty solid uh, GPP throw there. But on the King side, um, they're playing some of the worst defense in, or they are playing the worst defense in the league. They started to play a little bit better, but uh, on on their side, I'm looking. Uh, kind of tacking the interior, like you mentioned with the the Celtics, uh, Rashawn Holmes at 6,400. The Celtics also don't have a very good interior defense. Tristan Thompson is never known for his defense. Uh, Tice is pretty good. I think he's he's a good a good perimeter defender for uh, his size. Uh, he's not the greatest rim protector, but he is pretty solid. Um, so there's that. But I think Rashawn Holmes is still a really good matchup for him. Uh, he's probably going to be lined up against Tristan Thompson and. You could get Tristan Thompson. Uh, outside of him, I mean, Halliburton is 54. He's, this guy's just been playing really well. So I don't mind that. I think we have some other options that we can go to, too. Uh, but he's pretty much bringing back value every game. So he is super safe. He's one of the safer guys out there. He's getting 30 minutes at, uh, regularly now. And uh, if you need, looking at 5X would be uh, about 26 points. He's just eating that. So really like him there, too. Uh, and then the last guy, you you touched on him for a moment out there, is Hassan Whiteside. If they if he can get 15, 20 minutes, they're kind of not playing Bagley as much at center, um, and he's just being Marvin Bagley, so he's getting a little bit less time. Now they're phasing uh, Whiteside back into the rotation, and against in this matchup, if he can get to 20 minutes uh, at 3,600, he can bring you back 27 fantasy points. This guy's just a point-per-minute monster. And and the more that they kind of take some minutes away from Bagley and give it to Whiteside, the better he's going to be for your lineups. Yep, I'll, I'll take a I'll take a dart throw at, at Whiteside and, and GPPs definitely. I mean, just same thing with uh, Ty 
Time Lord, you know, uh, they're, they're similar price tags, 3500 3600 So, you know, don't play both, but play one of those guys and, and, and hope them for the best is never a, never a bad play. Um, you know, Halliburton's mm-hmm. obviously, like you said, a, a strong play. Um, I, I don't mind taking a stab at Bagley and some GPPs. You know, he was putting up some pretty big games, um, you know, before the last uh, stretch of really bad games. So, again, this is GPP dart throw, but uh, I wouldn't mind playing him a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, I just... I don't have a lot of interest in the on the side at all. So, all right, I like it. Uh, so that's it for our ten games. Just slightly over an hour. Um, I do want to tell you guys to join the DFS Pass if you haven't already. Uh, it's one ninety nine a month, and it, it gets everything that we have there. And the coolest feature that Keith is crushing in there. Uh, but the DFS Pass, um, the DFS Pass, the Discord chat room where. All this late breaking news and everything, we're in here trying to help you guys uh, last minute. There's been a lot of shaking and baking all year, usually always like this, but this year more so than ever before with all of this uh, cancellations and last minute type of things. So it's always nice to have, hey, this person is out. Uh, where should I pivot? Uh, or what? who do you feel? How do you feel about this or this? Uh, just a really good thing to to be able to do and uh before we head out on the hair man something that we've been trying lately i do want to get your opinion and i will ask you quickly but i'll, I'll ramble on a little bit uh, but i want to know who is one guy you're targeting in in the expensive tier and keith is also writing the article by the way so you'll also get his other favorite plays uh but who is one guy you're targeting in your expensive tier then i'm going to ask you about your your mid tier and then i'm going to ask you who's your who's one of your favorite value plays there's a lot to choose from in, in a couple of these categories, and no, there's only three. But uh, where are you looking at for that expensive guy? The expensive uh, tier, my favorite play is Jimmy Get Buckets. Jimmy G Get Buckets Butler. <laughs> He's mm, I like it. 8,400, that's my favorite play. <laughs> I like it. 8,400 for the Butler. Um, I I guess I, I was going to say Don uh, Luca, but maybe I don't, Maybe that's a cop-out now that you're, you went Butler, so... Uh, um, maybe I won't have to go that way. And I, I'll go to, I, I really like Jason Tatum for 8,900. Um, I'm going to play Luca at 10, eight against Trey young. But if I'm not, if you don't want to spend that high, I, I like Tatum at 89. He's, he's a guy that I'm targeting against the worst defense in the league right now in the Kings. Uh, but how about in that mid tier and that under eight K range, who's a guy that you are, I oh, you already two. have it. I want to name two, but but you know what? I think you're probably going to name the other one, so I'll just name one. My favorite is Jakopodl, um at 4,600. He is my favorite mid-tier player. Okay, and I, I like that one. Um, he's probably he's one of the guys I was looking at, and I just had one, and I, I completely forgot. But uh, another mid-tier guy that I'm really feeling, uh, well, I'm going to go low too, but maybe I won't go all the way down to miles. I'll, I'll go up a little bit. Um, for for the people at home, no, yeah, I'll just say that I, I like Miles at, at similar price tag too. I think you should see thirty five or so minutes, um, and it's a cheap cheap affordable price tag. But uh, if we're paying a little bit more, Dad Young at fifty nine, he's just eating value right now. I guess I, that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like it. And how about at your we'll say four two and under price tag type of thing. Oh man, that just cuts out the ML done. I'm gonna include him in the value tier just because he's so close. I like but, it. Uh, but if we if we go 4200 and under though, if we actually want to be playing by the rules, uh, my favorite value play is 3700. Uh, uh, Maryland's Noel. Uh, I think he's gonna have a better game against the Chicago Bulls. Mitch Ro- Mitchell Robinson looks a little hobbled out there. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, when you watch him play, I mean, I watched him like limp around the court one game for a solid two three minute stretch, and of course Tibbs didn't take him out because it's Tibbs, but. Uh, yeah, I like Nolan's Noel at 3,700 as my value play. I like it. And, um, yeah, there, there's quite a few guys. Maybe not – maybe the under 4K isn't the way that we can say value on this slate because the just above 4K, like you mentioned, Maladon, everybody on the Thunder pretty much uh, is, is just above that. Um, but, but a guy that I'm looking at, we kind of touched him on, on him at the last minute, is Hassan Whiteside at 3,600. He's starting to play. He played – in the last four games, this isn't eye popping minutes, but 16, 20, 20, 14. Uh, if he's playing in that 20 range against the Celtics, he'll bring back value and uh, probably 25 or more points. That Celtics interior defense isn't great, and he's a point per minute monster. All right, man. 
Anything else that you want to say before we head on out here? And before you do, I do want to say everybody follow Keith on Twitter. I'm going to take a stab at this Twitter name. His Twitter handle is Ginsberg Beats. That's G one N S B E R G B three A T S. Ginsberg Beats. All right, man. <laughs> and uh, anything you want to say before we head on out of here? No, just come join me in the Discord, everybody. Let's have some fun. You get some candids of uh, Scotty Pippen up in there, so uh, come, come join me. <laughs> All right, I like it. And this was it for our whopping 10-game slate here. Oh, the, the the ebbs and flows of the NBA season where you get four games, five games, and then a 10, then a four game, then an 11. Uh, it's, just, it's just very weird so far. I wonder what we're going to have when they actually make the second half of the schedule. Uh, but that's for another day, man. And we will catch you guys again tomorrow, I believe. Uh, Mike should – I believe Mike's going to come back tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to be with him on tomorrow. Um, and we will get you on a – let's see what we have for Thursday. Uh, one, two, three, four, a five-game slate. Yep, the ebb and flow of the NBA season. We'll have a five-game slate for you guys tomorrow. Uh, so do catch us and do give us a like or uh, rate and review and subscribe to our channel and listen more. All right, guys, we'll catch you again tomorrow. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation. Good afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I I'll just take one more, just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change, like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm, is that macadamia nut I taste? Let me take one more. Sir, mm. yeah. I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Today is nonstop. And suddenly, your checking account is overdrawn. But what if we gave you more time on that one? At Huntington, if you accidentally overdraw your account by $50 or less, we've put a $50 safety zone in place, so you won't be charged an overdraft fee. It's one more way we're looking out for you. So you can have time for what matters most. Huntington, welcome. $50 safety zone does not apply to returned items. Your account will be automatically closed if it remains negative for 60 days. Learn more at Huntington.com slash safety zone.